This is going to be a high yield review of the commonly tested topics on step one psychiatry section. We'll start with transference. This is when the patient takes their feelings about people or things and projects that onto the physician. Countertransference is when the physician does the same thing but towards the patient. Signs of child abuse, particularly in an infant, are retinal hemorrhages or retinal detachment, bone fractures, acute on chronic subdural hematomas, and burns, particularly around the buttocks if they were dipped into hot water. If a child does come in with fractures, make sure that you ruled out a condition like osteogenesis imperfecta. If you have a young kid between the ages of say six and nine who's sexually provocative, this is a red flag for sexual abuse. The disorder I want to bring up, uh, there are many of them. One I want to talk in particular is a conversion disorder. This is when you have the neurologic problems, but you don't seem to care. For example, you, you, you can't move your arm, but you don't really care. Uh, you have that labelle indifference, so know how to recognize that. Autism is going to be your child who plays alone and has poor eye contact. They usually do repetitive tasks. Um, they don't show interest in, in activities that other kids would be excited about. Um, and one thing the examiners usually go after is to make sure that the child isn't deaf and that they can actually hear you while you're testing them. Um, delirium is on the other side of the spectrum. Um, this is going to be your older patient. This is going to be a patient who may have an underlying infection like urinary tract infection who has that waxing and waning consciousness. Know that the treatment is going to be a first generation antipsychotic like haloperidol. Schizophrenia is a large topic. Uh, the definition of schizophrenia uh, as of making this video is going to be someone who for more than six months has had disorganized thought and strange behavior as, as well as negative effects like a flat affect, negative symptoms like a flat affect. Um, if this is going on for only a month, that's a brief psychotic episode. One to six months is a schizophreniform disorder. More than six is actually schizophrenia. Something that confused me a lot is schizoaffective disorder, so I want to talk about this. This is when you are affected by two different disorders. You are affected by schizophrenia and major depressive disorder. So at, at some times in your life, you may have the schizophrenia symptoms, and at other times, you may have the major depressive disorder symptoms. Another point that I'd like to make is the difference between psychotic and delirious. Um, someone who is delirious, they think of things that are very unlikely, but maybe, maybe possible. For example, the FBI is typing my phone. Uh, we had a patient who thought, the, who thought the mafia was chasing them, and it turned out the mafia was actually chasing them. So that would be delirium. A delirium. Um, someone who is psychotic, on the other hand, that is a break from reality. They think green aliens are on their shoulders, and that's a whole different story. Bipolar disease, uh, you have the manic episodes. I'll try to include a link below um, because once you see a manic episode, I don't think you'll ever forget one. They usually last a week. Hypomanic episodes are a little less severe and last around four days. Bipolar one, the definition of someone who has a manic episode, whereas bipolar two, you have hypomania and uh, a major depressive disorder as well. Talking of major depressive disorder, a uh, quick note here is that you can have psychotic features. Um, you would differentiate this between the schizoaffective where you have the schizophrenia and the major depressive disorder because those happen at different times. If you have major depressive disorder with psychotic features, it would be on the same day. It was while you have the depression, you have the psychotic features. Uh, another thing regarding depression, obviously the, the ciggy caps is important. Um, I know that electroshock therapy can help um, in drug if it's resistant to pharmacological approaches. Normal grief, this happens between six and 12 months is around normal if you lose a loved one to grieve or even if you think you hear their, vo their voice or you may have seen them, um, that's normal up to around a year. After a year, this is pathological and, and should be dealt with. Panic attacks, uh, they may have a, a young girl, maybe 19 year old girl uh, shows up to the ED um, with signs and symptoms of a myocardial infarction but the EKG looks fine. Uh, this, this speaks towards a, a panic attack which you would treat with benzodiazepines. Different eating disorders to be aware of. Um, anorexia, this is when the patient um, really isn't eating a lot and they physically are emaciated. Uh, they have real physical telltale signs that something's going on. They may have amenorrhea, osteoporosis, hair falling out, electrolyte disturbances, a BMI of 17. Um, whereas bulimia nervosa, they have the binging and the purging, but generally they look, they look okay. So that's the difference between the two of those. Sexual dysfunction, um, you would want to ask the patient, anyone complaining of, of sexual problems if in the, if, if in, when they wake up in the morning, um, if they have an erection, if they do, then you know that the, the equipment is working and the problem is likely psychological. 
Lastly, regarding NARC epilepsy, I've seen a bunch of questions on the CSF analysis here. You would see low hypocretin 1 and 2, uh, or another, another term for it is orexin, so that, that would be low. Regarding recreational drugs, um, it's always good to look at the pupils or the eyes to kind of figure out what's going on. If someone has pinpoint pupils, uh, we're thinking opioids like morphine or heroin. If they're dilated, we're thinking cocaine. The treatment for cocaine overdose is going to be benzodiazepines and non-dihydropropylene uh, calcium channel blockers to control the tachycardia like verapamil or dotilism. A patient, if, if they say they have an astagmus, we're thinking PCP, they may not even have memory of the event. And if someone has ophthalmoplegia, they can't move their eye and they're also confused and falling over. That's Wernick's encephalopathy from alcohol. Someone with alcohol uh, addiction, you can treat that with naltrexone. And uh, someone with alcohol withdrawal, the immediate effect can be seizures. And after a few days, they could get delirium tremens. Um, so if you have a patient who is admitted under an emergency setting, and a few days later, they start acting very aggressive and having that hallucination, you should be thinking this may be delirium tremens. Antipsychotics, the first generation, uh, know that these can cause NMS, neuro malignant syndrome, which is treated with dantrolene, the same medication for malignant hyperthermia. It blocks the calcium channel block. It's a, it blocks the calcium from coming out of the, the circa. And the progression is going to be um, dystonia, then akathisia, then bradykinesia, and then um, you have the tardive dyskinesia. I remember it's if you dab DAB, right, the dystonia, the akathisia, bradykinesia, and then finally the tardive dyskinesia which um, anticholinergic like benchtropine ha have shown uh, some use or some help. The second generation antipsychotics to be aware of, olanzapine and clozapine, they could increase weight gain and that clozapine is used for drug resistant uh, schizophrenia. So do a metabolic panel if they're on those medications. Um, if someone is on lithium uh, the, for bipolar disease, know that thiazides are contraindicated with lithium. You do not give thiazides with lithium. That's very high yield. Um, lithium can also cause Epstein's anomaly and that if lithium is contraindicated in your patient and you need a mood stabilizer, you can use uh, something like Valproate. SSRIs can cause sexual dysfunction. Uh, patients may complain of that. Uh, another thing that they can cause is serotonin syndrome. This looks a lot like NMS, but they also have the myoclonus in their feet. Um, and the treatment is going to be cryptoheptadine. Serotonin syndrome develops very, very quickly, uh, almost immediately, whereas NMS takes a few hours to develop, so that the time can actually help you differentiate what's going on as well. Tricyclic antidepressants really aren't used much, uh, perhaps for OCD. Um, if a patient has tricyclic uh, overdose, they'd like you to know the signs. You'll, you may have a cardiac arrhythmia with anticholinergic uh, presentation, for example, a dry mouth, or urinary retention, you treat this with sodium bicarbonate. Bupropion, this is if your patient has a bad response to SSRIs, if they have that sexual dysfunction, bupropion is probably a good choice. And make sure that you remember with bupropion, it lowers your seizure threshold. So you don't give this with someone with a known seizure disorder or a patient with an eating disorder like uh, anorexia. The last one we'll talk about is St. John's wort. This may be taken by some patients for depression. Uh, this also works on the serotonin reuptake, it blocks it, so it can cause serotonin syndrome as well. And they like you to also know that this can induce the CYP450s, um, so it can definitely have interactions if you're taking a medication like warfarin. Uh, that concludes the review of the uh, psychiatry section. I hope this was useful. If you'd like me to go into detail about any of these conditions or, or make a video on anything else, please let me know. And I hope you have a wonderful day.